Growing up, I always knew my grandpa was a smart man. I knew he worked some government job and was your ordinary working man of the 1940s and 50s. However, only until recently, I discovered some interesting things about my grandfather's life. His life during World War II always fascinated me, but what I didn't know was his role after the war, when he fronted work on a new technology for the U.S. Navy, long-distance sonar. Growing up in Lemonster, Massachusetts, during the Great Depression, my grandfather was actually well off. His father worked in newspaper publication and was later the mayor of Lemonster. He was involved in a few big bands and went around town playing shows in many local auditoriums. I didn't know at that time uh, what I'd be doing in the future. I thought my future might be in music. Uh, I was at uh, Worcester Academy, the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor the next day after the attack. <clears throat> Somebody had a radio which uh, we set up in a vacant room across from where I was uh, being housed. And uh, we probably had a half a dozen people sitting around uh, a table with the radio in the center listening to uh, uh, Franklin Roosevelt. Uh, Congress declare that since the unprovoked and dastardly attack by Japan on Sunday, December 7, 1941, a state of war has existed between the United States and the Japanese Empire. Uh, in my class at Worcester Academy, a lot of them were uh, interested in immediately volunteering their services. The big emphasis was on uh, getting an education in a technical subject of some, some sort. Uh, mine was physics, which they thought was, was fine. As long as you were in a, a technical subject, uh, you could stay in school. They would uh, pay us uh, $50 uh, uh, a month. Uh, uh, give us a, an apprentice seaman's uh, uh, uniform, and of course pay for all our uh, educational expenses. My grandfather was working on his education during the war as a reserve, and when the time came, he and others were trained as apprentice seamen, waiting for their call to join the attack on Japan. However, this ended when the second atom bomb was dropped on Nagasaki. Of course, they, they were just devastating and, and just, just wiped out these, these two cities. So that uh, ended my uh, career as a, as a midshipman, and uh, the Navy went into a demobilization phase. Once the war ended, to finish off my grandfather's commission in the U.S. Navy, he was sent to spend one year on a U.S. provision ship off the coast of Japan. After that year, he was finally home, and the war was officially over for him. I didn't really intend to make the Navy a lifetime occupation. Uh, so the question was, what do I do now? I was mailing a letter one day in the local post office, and I uh, walked in and uh, I uh, ambled over to the uh, bulletin board. Had all the uh, ten most wanted <laughs> criminals posted, so uh, that, that was a fun thing to look at. Uh, but then, just below that, uh, was uh, openings in the Navy uh, for people they were looking for at the, at the junior uh, level. I, I took down the address, you know, where you at, where you apply, and I thought, well, I'm, I might as well. I don't know what this is all about. It said the uh, openings were for the uh, underwater sound laboratory uh, at New London, Connecticut. And uh, I didn't quite know what this was all about. Uh, some confusion when they said underwater sound laboratory. Does that mean the, the whole laboratory is underwater? <laughs> and uh, I thought, well, well, maybe. But uh, anyway, I'll go through the motions. <laughs> and uh, I mean, they, they like the looks of my background and degree from Yale and all that. So uh, it ended up they gave me a formal uh, 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 offer, 
For the first time, a United States submarine in Pacific waters is shown hunting for the enemy. They were at the point where uh, they needed to uh, uh, come up with a proposal for a new sonar system. Let's say the average ranges, detection ranges, uh, with the fleet systems at that time were about, uh, about a mile. <laughs> And uh, that was uh, kind of late because we know the submarines had long-range torpedoes, five-mile torpedoes. So they wanted somebody to, uh, or some organization at the time, which was headed up by Bill Downs, to uh, organize an effort to uh, come up with a proposal for a, a new sonar system. So he appointed me to head up the effort. You send out a, uh, a, a pulse of, of sound, it's, it's, it's very similar to what radar does uh, above, above water. The submarine has now picked up radar signals indicating that a Japanese ship is near. Uh, a, a pulse which would last uh, anywhere up to one second long. And uh, then you would wait for the pulse to come back and you'd have a scanning system so you could determine the, the direction it was coming from. And then, of course, you, you, you know the range because you know when you sent it out, you know when it was coming back. And uh, <clears throat> so the, the, the solution for the range of the, of the echo was, was fairly easy to, to uh, work out. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, given that, that capability, uh, we calculated you should get a strong enough echo that would be above the background noise back at own ship and, and back above the reverberation as well. So that, that was where the calculations came in. Just one of the fearless undersea fleet that braved death for months at a time to bring victory in the Pacific. So after kind of like just looking back on it all and everything, yeah. are you like proud of like the kind of like accomplishment you had you had in this? Well, yes, I think that. Well, the fact is that uh, this system is la is still going on new ships, and it's been going on since you know let's say 1960, and uh, so at this time, uh, well. It's this 85 ships, uh, uh, they're, they're out there. So I think that that is a measure of success. The fact they've continued to buy them for all these years and uh, that they'll be around for a good part of 100 years. When you think of the, the life of the current ships out there, they'll still be here after, you know, all of us are, are dead and gone. My grandpa has had a whole life I didn't know about until a few years ago. His humility and dedication has led him to an incredible career and lifestyle. Such a career, in fact, that just last year he received a Lifetime Achievement Award for his work in naval engineering. Just listening to his stories has been a joy on its own, and imagining what it was like living in it is a whole other story.